Now, where do you think you're going to take this skateboard career? Well, skateboarding is my life. The youngest competitor at this year's X Games, Ryan Sheckler. He was one of the first to really live up to the hype of being a child star. From 8 to 13 is where everything happened. Everyone knew Ryan was good. It's just the reality show. The show? The show. Ryan Sheckler's really hot! <sighs> There hadn't been a street skater yet to put themselves on the map for a mainstream audience. You know, some people despise him for that. I was trying to, like, do my own thing. All of a sudden, you know, these dudes are like, Brian Sheckler is ruining skateboarding. For a lot of people, it just seemed easier to categorize him as, like, a teen beat superstar. Prove himself, prove you wrong. He thrives off that type of energy in attack. There was times where I would look in the mirror and I was like, let's get back to what got us here, real skateboarding. I'll skateboard forever. Skateboarding has literally always been a part of my life. It's always been around. I've always been a skateboarder. Even like before I can remember being on a skateboard, I was on a skateboard. I look back at photos and home videos. I'm rolling down the street with my dad. I loved going fast and that feeling is still to this day one of the most important feelings. Skateboarding has been a fascination of his since he was about 18 months old. Trying to stand up on it, trying to understand it. Dad would build the ramps at the house and I just wanted to be in the air. That was it. That's all I wanted. Ryan had a confidence to go big at a very early age that stayed with him. I think I did a lot of things when I was a kid that showed me that I can do really anything. You know, like, if that didn't hurt me, I'm gonna be fine. Which, in turn, translated to me jumping down huge things for my whole life. You could tell right away that he had balance and coordination with his skateboard and his ability to like do all the big stuff came, I think, because he was so light and small. He was like a leaf, fly off cliffs and <laughs> sail through the air. I first met Ryan when he was about eight years old. We both skated the California Amateur Skateboard League. Castle, that was really the only competition series for amateur skateboarders. And I won the first contest I ever entered. He was eight years old and he won almost every event. You know, he was the rising star of all the amateur events. At a certain point, the talk around Castle was like Tampa, Tampa Am. And so I got the opportunity to go skate at Tampa. Everybody, Ryan Shetland! a helmet on, had knee pads on. You know, I remember calling my dad and I was like, it's hard to like get your line. He's like, don't be scared, just drop in. They'll respect you. And that's kind of how I just barged in. I was just in there. He was so small compared to everyone else. I know that there was negative chatter, but you had to skate and do the talking. It wasn't about placing for me. It was about being in that zone because I knew that's where skateboarders were. At that age, I don't think a lot of people took him serious. It wasn't that he wasn't really good. He was really good. It was like, he hasn't grown into his style, but you can tell it's all there. I definitely had the little kid syndrome where the older dudes were like, man, whatever. When you're a grown man standing on a deck and you have like a kid, you know, flying around the park doing all these tricks with a helmet on, it's a cool thing that's happening and you're like, dang, that kid's ripping. But there's just like a, a novelty there. I could feel it, but it didn't deter me from like doing what I wanted to do. I did have confidence because I knew that I was in the mix, you know? It was like, I liked skateboarding, I liked skateboarders, and now I was one of them. At that point, yeah, I was juiced up. 2003 rolls around, and that year was wild. 
I won Slam City Jam, Gravity Games, Van Triple Crown, and I got invited to go to X Games. Brian Sheckler is only 13. Now I'm on the stage, like I'm at the big show. Contest starts, and the course was just flowing. It just felt good. Here he is, out in the park course. My goodness, look at the power he's got. Right when I got to the point of the kick for Bindi, the way it flicked and it hit my hand, I knew I was on. What are we seeing right now? We're seeing a 13-year-old dominate the park competition. And look at this, 93.33 is in first place. Oh my gosh. I think at that point people realize like, there's a kid here that's starting to take over the skate world, you know? I don't really know what that meant to have won the X Games, you know, at 13. Couldn't have imagined what came after that. At some point through all that, I turned pro. And in between all of that, too, I was filming, which was a whole nother thing, because now I'm like in the streets. Street skating is so important. It's the essence of skateboarding. It's where it started. Getting a street part and getting out in the cuts isn't easy for a kid at that age. I didn't know where to go or how to go about street skating. So like if I got on a trip with these guys, I would go on the big city tour. And yeah, there were demos, but it was also street skating in between. And so I was thrown into like the fire with all the best dudes. It was motivating. I remember having the same feeling as contests in the street because it was so fun and so unique to me. When he started really putting out video parts, Ryan's respect level skyrocketed. Thirteen to sixteen was absolutely crazy. It felt like it was never stopping, and then all of a sudden it would be two years later. He had all the stars aligned to like take it to another level where it hadn't been taken before. Most people that know Ryan know that he ended up doing a show on MTV. Who did you guys come here to see? Chef Chekla. He was straight famous. Fame is a drug, and you might follow it to your own demise. There were points that I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. Fifteen to sixteen, that was like rocket ship speed. It felt like it was never stopping, and then all of a sudden it would be two years later. You could recognize that kids were grabbing onto him. It was like the perfect storm almost. Like you have this young kid, good enough at a skateboard where other kids are paying attention, and kids are the largest demographic. That's like a dream for a company. And then his personality, like he had a cool personality. It was like the perfect storm to create a huge following inside of skateboarding. It honestly was overwhelming. There were points during those years that I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. Like, I don't know if I want to be this pro guy traveling this much. You know, I was putting a strain on my family. Mom had to travel with me. I wanted to be at home. Like, I wanted to be hanging out with my friends. That's why one year I took off to go to freshman year of high school, because I needed to. You know, I'm not going to stop skateboarding. But I need to have interaction with kids my own age. Like, I was traveling with adults my whole life. I've been around adults my whole life. I was a teenager that had never really known being a teenager. I wanted to just, like, enjoy a summer without having to be jet-setting the whole time and never really got that break. 17, started filming Life of Ryan. That show came to be because I was hanging out with Rob Deerdick so much. I remember talking to him and he's like, yeah, you need an MTV show. And then I couldn't get that idea out of my head. Let's see, you know, let's see if they'd be interested. We did like a pilot episode, cast of the show, and MTV was super down. I was like, dude, what happened to my break? Like, you're not listening to yourself at all. On top of every dude tour, every X game, film a street party, be on the road. Now I have to come up with 15 episodes of a reality TV show. At that time, I had enough energy to like, I thought I could handle all of it. Once Ryan got the show, he was straight famous. Then he became a heartthrob. Ryan oh, Sheckler's really hot. Oh, yeah, really hot. Who did you guys come here to see? Sheckler. Oh, Ryan. Woo! It's a catch-22, because it's like, who wouldn't want their own show on MTV? Like, it's a pretty awesome opportunity that he got. And juggling that with coming up and trying to build respect with endemic skateboard culture, like, it was a big risk. 
It wasn't that we'd never seen a skateboarder on a Wheaties box. It was that we'd never seen one take so much risk without carving out their place in skateboarding first. So it made everyone feel uncomfortable. Like, is he a teen bee eating superstar or is he a pro skateboarder? For a lot of people, it just seemed easier to categorize him as a teen beat superstar. He got a lot of grief for the proactive commercial. He got a lot of grief for the axe commercials. It was different. With skating, skating kind of was birthed from this like anti-establishment, anti-corporation. And there was a moment where we were seeing what he was doing going, is he supposed to be doing this? Like, is this cool? There hadn't been a street skater yet to put themselves on the map for a mainstream audience. You know, some people despise him for that. If anybody ever is talking about you in a negative way, it always messes with your head at some level. It was super tough because I thought I was doing something cool because I was definitely introducing skateboarding to kids that had never thought about skateboarding. And then the actual skateboarding world was like, this is lame, like you're lame. I felt like backed into a corner because I was trying to do my own thing. All of a sudden, you know, these dudes are like, Brian Sheckler's ruining skateboarding. And I was like, how can one person ruin a sport that's individual based? How can I ruin a sport that's based on freedom? It sucked, man, it hurt really bad. It made me stop. I stopped doing the show purely because of that. Yeah, I mean, I could see it. I mean, it was an accumulation of a lot of press that the core nucleus of skateboarding was uncomfortable with, you know, and I could see that impacting him. You know, they were just, they're mean, dude. People were mean. I definitely seen it bug him, but when he gets bummed, you just awoken the monster. You awoken the beast. He's on some like, I'm gonna shut everybody up vibe. The show ended and Ryan really started to do some gnarly stuff. He put out two of the biggest kickflips ever done on a skateboard within like a couple of months of each other. Ryan went straight back into skating and proved to everyone that he is one of the best street skaters. That gives you a good example of who Shackler really is. That's the kid that I really love and respect. Prove himself, prove you wrong. He thrives off that type of energy. Attack. He was just being so productive, still winning contests. Then we had that weekend at Buster Bale. Shex, I got a thousand bucks on a hard flip right now. This time, stick him right now. I got an island for you right here. Something clicked on in a man and he just was like, I'm just gonna do everything I think I can do here today. Did the back lift. So he starts attacking the stairs, you know, he tray puts it next. I think he even backside flipped it that day. And he hard flips it. You know, that was just where he really came into like skating like a grown man. Some people still may have like tried to hold on to their dislike for him or whatever, but like, he's the real deal. What do I have to prove? That I'm a skateboarder? I don't, I am a skateboarder. I could totally see how like dudes that have put their body on the line their whole career to do tricks in the streets would see me as a kid coming up, bringing some mainstream players into the game, would be pissed off. Skateboarders look at skateboarding as ours, and it is. You know, I look at it the same way. But you don't get what I've put into this. I've put blood and sweat and tears and years of rehabilitation time. By the time I was seven, I had broke my elbow three times already. Right elbow five times. MCLs, both knees. Meniscus, both knees. Left ankle, once. This thing is taking me away from skateboarding. So much happened inside of skateboarding to take it to the next level. And Ryan was just the example of where skateboarding was headed. It was uncomfortable because our industry was changing. You know, and there was, I think, a moment where, like, we shouldn't let it go. Like, let's keep it what it is. Let's keep it pure. And I'm riding Fretney's, and I was totally concerned. I was like, dude, how is this going to make me look? What are people going to think if, like, I'm hanging out with Ryan? When we actually, like, saw each other, I was like, you know what? I really like him. Like, he's such a cool dude. All Ryan was 
was an incredibly cool kid who was really good at skateboarding. And that's really what skateboarders, I think, I guess at the core should be. After the show, I just realized how much I really love street skateboarding and how kind of far removed I was from it. And so once I started skating street again, being in the mix with what was going on and what was current in skateboarding, I knew I fit right in. Really skating well on trips and, and then I was still doing contests and still getting top threes. One of the most decorated street skaters of all time, Ryan Sheckler. People weren't dogging me as much. Just be on the board. That's all you need to do. Show's done. They're still playing them on MTV. They do the reruns for like the next two years. The fame, it just never stops. When you have a level of fame and notoriety such as the kind that I had from the show, the more famous you are and the more money you have, the more free things you get. It doesn't make any sense, but it's like people wanted us to come to their places to like get a little bit out of control. For a long time, I didn't see that there was a problem in that. You know, I didn't realize it until I took a step back. I was traveling the world from a very young age and I was exposed to adult activity, adult behavior my whole life. And so once I started creeping up to be an adult, I was doing what I saw the big guys do, which was drinking, partying, having fun, still waking up and skating, getting my tricks done, making sure I did good at contests. And I kind of justified it that way. Like, if I do good at contests, that means I can party. And it worked for a while until it didn't. It just seems like part of the lifestyle. Yeah, we're gonna go out, we'll party a bit, it'd be fun, it'd be cool, and tomorrow we'll go skate. We had some great times on the road. We had so many countless fun nights. But in skateboarding, we've seen far too many people not being able to control those demons, and uh, it ruins everything for them. It was a huge wake-up call for me around 25. It was like, man, if I could have not partied, my video parts would have been way better. My contest results would have been way better. My injury list would be way shorter. It was a lot from partying, man, but I didn't know any better. I realized I've been drinking too much. This thing is taking me away from skateboarding. Decided to, to check in to a, to a rehab and like try to get that under control. Fame is a drug, and when you have a taste of it, if you've ever wanted that, then it's like you might follow it to your own demise. And I'm sure that's how Ryan felt. It just sucks for him that it was at such an early age and such a formative age that I feel like maybe he kind of missed out on a normal sort of childhood that might have, you know, not led him down other paths. Because, yeah, he, he struggled. And it, it, like I said, it's super hard. It's intoxicating and you get caught in it. Rehab it will test every nook and cranny of your brain trying to get you to give up. If you push through it, you will be back. I would look in the mirror and I was like, all right, guy, let's get back to what got us here. Real skateboarding. And I went back to it and it was like, epic. Skateboarding is all about falling and trying again. You might fall a thousand times and then land it once, but that once is just enough it's perfect, it's everything you ever wanted. Same with life. 30 now and I just feel good. I feel like myself. I feel like I'm a part of the universe. I'm not fighting what's going on. I'm just looking at life differently. He looks focused, he looks happy. He still has a lot more to give. The Sheckler Foundation was started in 2008 and it's the one place where he really doesn't care how much energy and effort it takes, he'll give everything for it. I want skateboarding to last and I want it to be exciting and enjoyable to the next 10 million kids that pick up a board. We've helped build skate parks, we've helped children in the hospital, we've helped get adaptive action sports into X Games. 
And that's really what I want to be remembered as. It's like the dude that loved skateboarding and gave back to skateboarding and was a skateboarder through and through. There's so much more depth to what he's doing. He's done so many good things and given back and like he's, he's like a model athlete. He's done it all right. I think his legacy is gonna truly be like what is possible for skateboarders beyond skateboarding. Anybody who grows up in the spotlight, it's hard to define and figure out who you actually are versus you know, who you're supposed to be. His trajectory was different than every other skateboarder has ever been, but he arrived. He arrived at being such a solid guy. You know, it's been cool to watch his journey. My life has been wild. You know, I've been the little kid, the little Grom. I've been the cocky teenager. I've been a skateboarder that's ruining skateboarding. Like, I've been all these different things. But to me, they're all just experiences. Experience to get to right here, right now.